when I first made my electronic circuits uh, in 1967, 68, when I was 12 years old or so, 13 years old, uh, transistors were expensive. And there was, of course, in those days also a broad range of transistors, but say uh, many of them were used or made for the military. And then especially I mean in America. So um, it meant for instance that one transistor costed two guilders. Two Dutch guilders in those days. Well, that's approximately I think four euros nowadays. Oh. And we, we are talking about uh, 2025 in the Netherlands. So this is a say kind of old method to prevent that transistor leads break. And when you go to old uh, transistor magazines, uh, they always tell that you have to say clip here a, a piece of pliers. So here a piece of pliers here. Uh, to the pin connections and the reason is uh, that the transistor cannot not withstand heat but of course in those days we are talking uh, when it regards this problem always about germanium transistors and they are very very sensitive to heat anyway that's the same situation now but even now when you do a, a very short soldering uh, there's no need to say clip here a piece of pliers to take the heat away apart from the question that can such a plier uh, take heat away anyway so um, this is these are um, transistors from China the BC547B the BD139 and we can see that the wires connected here to the transistor are very very flimsy. In the 1970s these wires uh, were say more or less better sturdy so that they could not easily break off after say um, uh, being moved for a certain for a few times anyway. I think this is more or less the industrial ID uh, the transistor is pushed into a board and then it is soldered and, and no uh, no way that there is a kind of movement but when you do experimental circuits like me um, there is still a need to um, fix the transistor the transistor wires the pin connection so that they cannot break and I'm doing that here with this type of kit. It's in the Netherlands, it's called a Bison kit. And my experience is very good. And of course, when you use such a kit, there must absolutely be no electrical connection uh, between the pins of the transistor, be it a field effect transistor or a uh, bipolar transistor. Absolutely no. Uh, say connection between the pins when you apply that kit and there are as far as I know and that's only my experience only two kits that work properly and that is this the Bison kit contact glue it's a kind of rubber cement it fills up um, the location between the transistor etc and the second thing is transparent silicon kit. Perhaps you can do this also with hot glue. Um, I of course have such a hot glue pistol. Here are say uh, here um, say the glue pellets, the glue tubes, but anyway I I have no experience with that, at least no uh, elaborated experience when you do this with hot glue. It's possible, but uh, 
my advice and first idea is use this transparent silicone kit. Why transparent? Because the filler in that kit could also have, say, electrical properties. And that means that it could be that when you connect uh, a transistor to a certain circuit, that there is a electron flow between the three pins, and that electron flow is caused by the glue with which you have, say, made this um, the the fixing. Get the transistor more fixed. So the glue must be indifferent to electronic to um, say the transport of electrons between the pins. That was more or less all to tell. Thanks for watching. Uh, so we have now cheap transistors in 2025. Uh, you can buy them everywhere, especially via Ali. Uh, but they also have, say, kind of new properties. The wires are flimsy. And uh, there's also another issue. And that is that the amplification factor of these BGT transistors, say standard bipolar transistors, is much higher compared to the transistors that have the same type number of the 1980s and the 1970s. For instance, a BC547B had in the 1970s an amplification factor in the order of uh, 120 up to 150. But when you measure these Chinese B C547 or BC557, 557 is PMP, 547 is NPN, you will find an enormous current amplification. A kind of not expected current amplification. Well, that's a lot of noise. I do that with this, this transistor tester. I measure it with this transistor tester. And here I read, this was by the way a transistor tester published in one of the Elector magazines of the 1980s. And I see here on that transistor tester uh, a current amplification in the order of 300. 350 when I measure such a Chinese BGT transistor. Uh, the same happens, by the way, this is a, say, me, small power transistor. But the same happens with a Chinese uh, BD140s. That is a PMP medium power transistor. When it was made by Philips in the 1980s, it had an amplification in the order of 70, 80, perhaps 90. But this one, when I measure it, has an amplification, current amplification, in the order of 150. And that also means, this also, uh, it's the same for the BD139, but um, that also means the enormous amplification, that it needs a smaller base current to be driven into saturation. And that also means that these transistors, BD140 and the BD139, um, can be driven out with a smaller base current into saturation. And that also means that they can much more easily be damaged. Um, that's also very important. I burned quite a few of these transistors out during all my experiments. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I didn't want to make this video so long, but anyway, um, well, you can see now that the glue is already curing. Of course, move it from the piece of paper because otherwise it will stick to the paper and well, then the whole thing is done. So that was more or less all to tell. Thanks for watching.